Hello, in this video I'm going to talk about setting up open type features for your typeface. Open type features are instructions that get built into an open type font file, PostScript or TrueType, and they allow us to go into applications like Adobe InDesign or Illustrator, or also within CSS, and it allows us to select things inside a typeface file, like small capitals, like uh, old style figures, difference between numbers, figures, uh, fractions, um, also stylistic sets, and also we can create even randomization features too. Um, and what they essentially allow us to do is to program some intelligent behavior into the font file so that it can respond to context or that it just simply gives a type user more access to the font file when they're typesetting. Um, so, how do we do that? Now, what we'll do is just a simple kind of substitution. We're not going to do anything fancy. I don't have any numbers drawn so I can, or small caps. I could draw a small capital H. So maybe let's just do that really quickly because it would be great and easy to do. I'll do that first, then I'll do a substitution between random things, but really they all work the same way. Okay, so what I need to do is if I want to make something like a small cap or an alternate, what I do is I go Command D, which is a duplicate, and it makes a glyph called H.001, but what I actually want to say is lowercase h.sc. I could also call this smcp, which is actually the tag, registered tag in open type for a H like this. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this, I'm going to go Command F to find H.SC, and I'll draw a very quick small capital. Now here's a quick lesson on small caps. They should be about 15 to 20% taller than the lowercase letters, probably even a little bit taller than this. It needs to stand out a little bit more. And they tend to be a little bit lighter than the caps, but not by much. They need to match the weight and harmony of the lowercase letters. And it should match the width generally. Obviously it's not as tall, but it should match the width. So, really quick small cap character here. And let's just throw some fitting onto it. Okay, now, another thing that I want to do is I want to program. Actually, you know what? Let's wait to do an alternate of another kind. Let's go into our info, features. This is where we write open type features. Now, there's an area for prefix, classes, and features. Classes are groups of glyphs that will be referred to in the features. So if I click update, what's going to happen is Glyphs is going to put in language prefixes and it sees that I have small caps identified as .sc. So it's automatically built this feature. So actually Glyphs does a lot of things for you, which is great. Um, so if you draw the character first, it'll probably make an alternate for you. Um, and it'll access the alternates, which these are the two features capitals to small capitals and small caps. This means if there's a text that's set in all caps, change all of those caps to the small caps. Or if lowercase letters need to be set in small caps, that's what SMCP is for. And both of them are being registered because in programs like InDesign, if you click all small caps, it'll just take everything, look for these two, it'll activate these two features at the same time and then it will prepare small caps from those. Under language system it's just default which is Latin script right now. We don't have any other scripts. If we had Cyrillic or Greek or Arabic or Chinese characters for instance or uh, Devanagari that would have to be encoded in here as the language system for the uh, to correspond with Unicode and therefore correspond with the open type. Now let's say we want to write a contextual alternate. So we want, as a contextual alternate, let's go old school here and let's say I want a ligature 
that you might have seen before in, if you've looked at the historical texts where the C joins into the top of the T. This is a really old school ligature. It doesn't get used really in contemporary situations, but it's a really good example of how we could build a contextual alternate very simply. Um, or if we wanted to, we could do something else with something like the lowercase a, but let's do this for now. So a character or even an ST has the same treatment. In fact, it might be easier to do this way. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate one of these characters, which by the way, I can just duplicate right in here by hitting command D. And what I'm going to say is I want ST dot lig. Okay, lig me just means ligature. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring a T in here and I want to do something here. I'm going to bring the T in and I want to copy the spacing distance between these two glyphs. Uh, so I'm using that glyph. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to say T and S. So it gives me those side bearings. Now what I'm going to do is in order to get this kind of shape that I want to see, I need a kind of curve. So where can I hack curve from? Let's do a rotation. Let's rotate this one. Okay, this will do. What I'm going to do is I'm going to cut this. And then I'm going to move this out of the way. This kind of curve goes like this. It's as if you were writing this character and you would go, you would write like this. You go, and then you come back up here and go directly into this character. So it's actually kind of a cursive trait. What we're going to do is blend it onto the top of the T. It's been a while since I've drawn one of these ones because you just don't see it that often, but it's an interesting ligature. And what I actually want to do then in this case is I want to pretend that it's coming out of this character, or not pretend, but I want to make it look like it's doing that. But also the modulation needs to change. What is this? 45, 39, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And this could stand to be a bit heavier. And okay. For the sake of demonstration, let's just keep it short. But my perfectionist designer mind is saying, my God, it has to be perfect. But it doesn't. You just got to let it go. All right. So. Yeah, this is like a general kind of shape here for this. And remember not to cross these areas. And yeah, let's do something like this. Okay, so let's say that that's our ST ligature. It's going to pop up in the text when I have an S and a T that get typed together. So basically what I'm going to instruct the program to do is within a contextual alternate, which means contextual alternate refers to an alternative that occurs when, when I defined a context or a contextual situation. So it only define, it only appears when I turn on those contextual alternates. Um, and it happens within a certain context, which is going to be when I type S, on my keyboard followed by a T, it will actually substitute this if the if the ligature or the contextual alternate is turned on. Okay, so what I want to do then is I want to go in here and I'm going to go in here. We might have to define a class, but let's see if it will work without it. I think the new version of glyphs actually doesn't make us do that, but we need to do C alt which stands for contextual alternate. And what I'm going to say is sub s t by s t dot lig. Now, and then we have to follow any, any sequence, any line command in open type has to be finished by a semicolon. Uh, and I think that actually when you type a letter sequence, you have to follow it by an apostrophe. And I don't know. Let me see if that will work. It'll tell me if it doesn't work. 
and we'll see if it doesn't work. Now, if you've written open type features and you come down to here, this will pop up once you get some open type features and you can select from the features you've got. So for instance, I could say I've got a capital and I want to make small capital from capital. Or how about this? I've got an H and I want to make a small capital from the lowercase h. Awesome. Very cool. But what if I want to type the S and the T? Now the features can be used at the same time. If I turn on contextual alternate and I type ST, ah, it's working. S, T. If I turn that off, it goes back to normal. So if I turn it on, all the STs are like that, but it will behave. So basically what's saying is if the glyph S is typed and then it is followed on the key and the on the uh, on the keyboard by someone pressing the glyph T lowercase Latin script, it's going to substitute for this entire combo, which is actually glyph st dot lig. Okay. Now to take this one step further, what if I want what if I want an alternate version of A? And an alternate version of A could be just for the sake of demo. It could be a single story A which I'm not a fan of in a typeface like this for readability, but I don't know, let's just do it uh, for the sake of alternate. Another thing I guess we could do is not alternating that way. We could do a.alt, alternate, a.alternate. I could even make another version of this a where it does like something, I don't know. No, I think we're going to go with the double story one, or the single story one. Let's bring in the D. Mm, come on. Okay. And then all we're going to do, actually, yes, all we're going to do is chop this, bring the Q over, because the Q has a nice top for this kind of character. And, oh, you know what? Let's merge this one. And chop off that part, cut this part, and oh, cut that part, cut that part. Okay, awesome. That works. Then what we're going to do is go in here and under contextual alternates, we can also, we can do it this way. We can say sub A by a dot alt whoops ah, gotta get the syntax right or it is not gonna be happy oh cool so because it was turned on that was an alternate there is a way to create an alt a randomized situation where these two a's could appear randomly or more or less randomly within the text so what that would be actually have to see. Am I typing an apostrophe? Ah, I don't know if that's going to work. Okay, so one thing we could also say is, I could say this, uh, if a, or wait, no, sub a, a, by a dot alt. I keep messing that one up. Okay. I might not like that syntax. No, it's fine with that. Okay. Now what should happen is if the contextual alternates are turned on. Ah, see? Now it's not now I'm able to type an A, so let's try to type something here. Now I'm able to type the letter A but it will not type the same A twice. So let's uh, let's try something else with that. Like you could say that you want to do it this way, where actually what I want is just a slightly different version of A. Like I want, maybe sometimes I want the, the bowl, for whatever conceptual reason you might have, I want the bowl to actually take this shape sometimes to shake things up and vary it. And I want this to cut down a little bit further because I just want to mix up the text pattern a little bit. Maybe I found that in research, that's a valuable thing. 
okay? And essentially what that means is that it's never going to use the same version. So if I have a word like, um, let's get a word that has, um, uh, but that's not going to work. It has to have two A's after that. Um, but so basically if I have a word like, um, I'm trying to think, it's hard to think of a double letter where, but like something like this, oh, and that fitting's not very good. This is like a Dutch kind of word, but, uh, but if I have a word like that where the two A's occur, it will never use the exact same version, so you can switch it up, um, and you can make things not be maybe as monotonous if you want to have a display function like that. Okay, this is just a basic example of open type features. What I'll do is in the class, if you have questions um, or if you have a concept that is not described, of course, in this video, what we'll do is we'll work on your concepts on a case to case basis and we can write the instructions together in class during critique time. Perfect. Okay, 